All right, we are less than five months away from the release of Assassin's Creed Shadows, and it seems as if the excitement and anticipation for this game is at an all-time low. If you do recall, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding this game, given the fact that they have decided to take the quote-unquote historically accurate approach and make their main character, or one of their two protagonists you can play, historically accurate, so they say. And of course, we all know that a lot of the Assassin's Creed games, despite depicting historical characters and uh, accuracy given the time that the game takes place in, they have never up until this point now decided to use a historical character as the assassin, as the main playable character. Well, now we have it in the form of Yasuke, the black samurai, non-samurai, depending on who you ask. And of course, what did Assassin's Creed Shadows do? Well, they released a trailer where the gameplay of him, he's actually basically beating to death a bunch of Japanese people with hip-hop music playing in the background. Very uh, racially insensitive. What else did they do? Well, they decided to uh, queerbait the LGBTQ community by trying to hint that both uh, protagonists will be part of the community of people that um, everyone wants to pander to these days for whatever reason. So the gay gamers are ex very excited, given the fact that apparently there's going to be relationship options for both sexes when it comes to the two playable characters. I don't know. This could be all just a bunch of empty gaslighting and trying to get the, the support of the LGBTQ community, but honestly, who knows? Maybe they are going to go that far. Then, of course, there have been other things such as Ubisoft stealing the Sekigahara Rifle Corps banner, a... Uh, essentially military recre or recreation group who gets together to do like, uh, you know, like the Civil War reenactors and all that. Well, this is something in Japan where these reenactors get out there and they have their banner, which has the name of their group on it. And Assassin's Creed just decided to lift every word on this banner for a little gameplay trailer they had, not even knowing what the translation actually was. Just shows the absolute brain dead lack of attention going into this game. And of course, again, the queer baiting has just gotten to be a little extreme. Now we're having the actual Wikipedia page for Yasuke getting locked down on Wikipedia. So it says here, Wikipedia has now removed the ability to alter Yasuke's Wikipedia page. None of their sources they use to justify their false claim that Yasuke was a samurai are Japanese. They are all Western. Leftists are the masters of historical revisionism. And of course, you can see the Wikipedia entry saying right here with four different options. And it says the following discussion is closed. Please do not modify it. Subsequent comments should be made on the appropriate discussion, uh, discussion page. No further edits should be made to this discussion. Option one has him as a samurai consistently. Option two as a samurai with a note that some sources do not call him a samurai. Option three as a retainer with a note that some sources call him a samurai. And option four as a retainer consistently. Survey was go with option one. Say that he is a samurai. And of course it says option one, the sourcing here seems to be pretty clear that Yusuke was a samurai is the majority view among scholars. We have lots of reliable sources that say he was a samurai, including this paper by an academic historian, uh, a book by Lockley mentioning several times above, several academic reviews of Lockley's book. It's all based on one book, essentially. One book and a paper, and a few references to him. So you have people commenting in saying, utterly ridiculous, why is it that Yusuke was never classified as a samurai in Wikipedia before the Assassin's Creed controversy? Good question. Why all of a sudden? This is pure ideological capture and the prime example of why Wikipedia is utterly useless for these topics. Grum's pointing out that you, uh, Wikipedia locked down the Yusuke entry. Lockley's book is the source of the samurai theory. Many of the other sources they cite are all drawn from the book. It's a circle jerk of Western justification. And of course, Thor Odinson points out and says, remember, they're re re Ugh, Sorry guys, I'm really tired. They're rewriting history to justify a video game. If they're willing to go that far for a video game, then how far are they willing to go to rewrite history when it comes to things that matter? And again, guys, I'm gonna point out one more time, this is why when we talk about DEI and terms like Marxism, or communism, or any of these ideas of rewriting history starting at year zero and all that. That's why these terms get connected. I know a lot of people are not happy with the term Marxist getting thrown out there, but the DEI crap comes from a Marxist uh, point of, of view of, of the world, essentially.
So this guy says, nobody's rewriting history. There's been some recent debate over whether Yasuke was a samurai or not. We can only go by the limited evidence we have. Ubisoft themselves has already clearly stated that, like the previous Assassin's Creed games. The game is a work of historical fiction. Okay. So Thor responds and says, we have access to the revision history on Wikipedia, you dishonest piece of garbage. The left is what the Wikipedia entry said for years. The right is what it says now. Yes, history is being rewritten and all in service to a corporation. And you can see here from this entry in 2009, it says Yasuke is a Japanese name used to refer to a black slave who for a short time was in the service of the Japanese warlord Oda Nobunaga. He is unnamed in contemporary accounts and is sometimes erroneously referred to as Karusin. Now you have here, in 2024, he was a man of African origin who served as a samurai to the Japanese daimyo Oda Nobunaga. Literally revisionist history, the same crap we've been talking about. Now the funny thing is you have the CEO of Ubisoft coming out recently, talking about all the things he's looking forward to for uh, Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed and all the hopes and dreams of the franchise. And then he was asked this question here in this interview. Some, the, the interviewer says, I'd like to end with a two-part question. First part, what dismays you about the games industry right now? And so uh, Yves Gimo, the CEO of Ubisoft, comes out and says, one thing I am concerned about right now is the malicious and personal online attacks that have been directed at some of our team members and partners. I want to make it clear that we at Ubisoft condemn these hateful acts in the strongest possible terms, and I encourage the rest of the industry and players to denounce them too. I am proud to support the amazing work of our teams and partners, and I will always trust in their creative choices. We should all celebrate the hard work and talent that goes into making video games. That's just great. So basically, Elon Musk, who called out the DEI crap and all the gamers who've been pushing back against all this wokeness, we are just the evil in the gaming industry that needs to be spoken out against. Well, now today, we have this article basically highlighting what Ubisoft's plans are for Assassin's Creed in the very near future. Apparently, the plan is to have modernized remakes of the original games. And yes, that should scare you as much as it scares me. So it says Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo has confirmed that the, there will be, or that they will be remaking and in the process modernizing some of the earlier titles in the Assassin's Creed franchise. The executive, who many may remember from his claim that Skull and Bones was a quadruple A game, and if you recall this, Skull and Bones, which is generally disliked, and I don't even know if there is an accurate way to track the player base of this game because of the fact that it's not a computer game right now. But, te you know, if you base it off the reviews, off the lack of excitement, nobody is probably playing this game right now, and everybody who played it was either underwhelmed or found it boring and just pointless. So it says, uh, they revealed the studio's plans for the history-hopping franchise during a recent sit-down with Ubisoft Communications Director Lucy O'Brien. Pressed by O'Brien as to what he personally believed these upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows might offer to those players who either have stopped playing or never played the series, Gimo asserted, I think the fact you are in feudal Japan and you explore such a beautiful world with two complementary yet different characters is a very enticing proposition. You can choose how to handle any situation, blah, blah, blah. This, again, talking about how you have the big, strong black man who's going to beat everybody to death, or you have the, uh, not, I'm not going to say androgynous, but the very not feminine looking uh, Shinobi, who's going to you know be more sneaky and stealth-like. Continuing on the topic of Assassin's Creed, O'Brien then inquired as to whether or not the franchise will continue to simultaneously produce more lean franchises, uh, franchise entries alongside the major ones, or stick to focusing solely on big budget releases. In turn, the CEO revealed, Firstly, players can be excited about some remakes, which will allow us to revisit some of the games we've created in the past and modernize them. Yeah, just take that in for a second. So, of course, drawing his thoughts on the franchise to a close, Guillermo ultimately teased there's a lot of good things to come, including Assassin's Creed Hex, which we've announced, which is going to be a very different game from Assassin's Creed Shadows. We're going to surprise people, I think. Oh, good, because that's what we need is more surprises. Notably, Guillermo did not specify either which games were being looked or in what ways they would be uh, they would seek to modernize them. However, a cursory glance at the recent franchise entries such as Valhalla Odyssey and Shadows suggests that the games will be subject to the standard fare, script updates to avoid causing offense, ham-fisted attempts at diversity, and perhaps worst of all, excessive and predatory microtransactions, which we've seen in situations with their upcoming game, Star Wars Outlaws, with a hefty price tag of $110 to $130 for the top-tier editions of the game. And on top of that, you have 
the wonderful modernizing to look forward to, where, you know, Ezio Auditore de Frenzi will no longer be essentially the uh, stalwart, you know, daring, heterosexual, straight white male that he was before. He'll have to be, you know, somehow more modernized and toned down. Maybe he'll have to rely more heavily on his female counterparts that he interacts with in his games. Who knows? Who knows what their idea of modernizing is? But unfortunately, it just sounds like more of the same woke crap that we've had to put up with for the last several years. And somehow these guys are just not learning from their mistakes. But let me know what you think about all this. Let me know if you're excited for these remakes of the original Assassin's Creed games. And I will catch you later. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.